How y'all doing today? Welcome back to the Caffeinated Traders Lounge. Today we are going to discuss taking partial profits. All right, so there's a lot of debate on this, whether it's actually a good thing to do or, you know, does it even benefit us? Um, a lot of people say it does, then there's others that say it doesn't. Um, you're better off to just aim for a one to three risk to reward, uh, one to 1.5, one to two, whatever, right? Just aim for that, hit your target or let it hit your stop loss and whatever win percentage you get, um, you know, that that's the better route, some people say. However, we're going to break it down. We're going to look at a spreadsheet that I made quickly. I did put it into a PowerPoint to make it present a little bit easier for you because uh, the spreadsheet is a lot of numbers and it's very busy to look at. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll break that down and we'll see what is the better option for you to actually implement in your trading. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is, you know, if we're trading a one standard lot based on our stop loss placement, how much would we actually be risking? All right, so for this example, I used five pip, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 pip stop losses. But in the rest of the example, I stuck with just the 10 pip stop loss and um, that would give us a hundred dollar loss on that trade if it hit our stop loss. All right, so now for the people that say trading a one to three risk to reward is the better option, let's take a look at that. All right, so the first trading strategy, like I said, is gonna be that one to three risk reward. And based on this, we're either gonna let the trade run to our uh, take profit or we're gonna let it hit our stop loss with a 40% win rate. Uh, you know, a lot of people can get better than a 40%, but maybe not on a one to three because hitting three times your risk, hitting three times your stop loss is a little bit harder to do. So, you know, most times you're gonna have a little bit lower win rate on that, all right? So we, we were a little conservative with that um, and we're using something that is more reasonable for most, uh, for most traders, right? So that's gonna be our first strategy and let's take a look at the numbers. So here, the one to three risk to reward with a 40% win rate based on 10 trades with um, four of those being losses, or sorry, four of those being wins and six of them being losses, it still gives us a net profit in the end of $600, which is, it's decent for sure, it's decent. You know, you only have to win 40% of the time and, you know, you come out on top with $600 trading one standard lot, right? So based on that, like a one to three risk to reward, if you want to just trade that and, you know, just enter the trade, let it run to your take profit, let it run to your stop loss. If that's what happens, you know, you may still make money using that. And it's a very simple strategy. However, we're going to look into taking partials. Okay, so trading strategy number two, we're going to take partial profits at 15 pips. So remember I said we're going to use a 10 pip stop loss. So we're going to aim for a one to three, the same thing as the other strategy. However, we're going to take partials halfway through that. So we have a 15 pip target on our first take profit and a 30 pip target on our second take profit. Still the same 10 pip stop loss. All right. So now a lot of people say to take profit or take partial profits, but they never actually go into depth as to how to do it. All right. Um, is it better to take 50% off? Is it better to take 60, 70, 80, even 90% off that trade at your first take profit? I don't believe anybody has ever mentioned this that I've seen personally. It's possible they have. It's possibly you've seen it. But from what I see when people talk about it, they just say, I've taken partials at this point and no one really knows how much they've taken off that position, right? All right, so before we actually break it down and see which percentage is better to take off, I just wanted to quickly look at a chart quickly just to show you, you know, the three different scenarios of what could happen if we take our partial profits, all right? So in the first scenario, you know, we see price coming in, we enter here, hoping that it'll continue higher. However, it runs straight down to our stop loss and stops us out. 
So that's going to be a 10 pip stop loss, $100 loss on a one lot. All right. Scenario number two, we have price coming in, enters us here, goes up, takes our first take profit at 15 pips, comes down. And because we moved our stop loss to break even, we now secured that initial 15 pip target and broke even on the remainder of the trade. All right, now scenario number three, we see price coming in, enters us right here. We hit our first take profit, comes down a bit, retraces a little bit, but then runs up to our full 30 pip stop loss. All right, so those are the three different scenarios that could play out um, when you're using partial profits, right? So now let's get into the, the PowerPoint and see exactly what these numbers break down to and which percentage is actually better to take off. All right, so take profit one. Let's say we were to take 50% off, we would close out half a lot and that would give us $75. Now breaking it down, 60% would give us $90, 70% would give us 105, 80%, 120, and 90%, 135. And that is banked, that is secured, that is in our trading account. No one can take that away from us because we've already taken our partial. So based on these numbers right here, it actually looks better, obviously, to take more of the position off. You're securing more profits, right? But is it actually better? All right, that's something we're gonna look at uh, because it is very important and, you know, everyone wants to know, like, how do I make the most money out of, out of my trades, right? So if we were to take off 50%, obviously we have half a lot left. If we take off 60%, we got 40,000 units and so on down to 10,000 units. All right, that's gonna be our remaining position. That's gonna run hopefully to our full 30 pip target. Now, our second take profit. If we were to take only half a lot off, reduce 50% of our position, our 30 pip target on that half a lot would now give us $150, all right? And then so on down to our, if we took 90% off, leaving only 10,000 units would give us only $30 on the remaining position at a full 30 pip target, right? We'd only be making $30 on that. So you can see now adding our additional partial right here, adding these numbers to our now 30 pip target, it actually is better to only take 50% off if we can still get that 40% win rate um, on hitting our full take profit, right? All right, so if we did take our 50 um 50 percent off at our first pay, take profit we would have our 75 dollars right here and then our remaining position would run for another 15 pips for a total of 30 which would bank us 150 dollars for a total of 225 dollars which originally we thought this was the better scenario taking you know, securing $135, you know, that sounded good at the time. However, if we actually break down the numbers, this 165 is actually $70 less than this number right here. All right, so this is gonna be our better scenario based on the total profit that we can accumulate. All right, so this chart here is gonna show basically if we stick with our 40% win rate, so we have four trades running straight to our 30 pip target, take our partial at 15, remainder position at 30 pips. Um, but then let's say we can capitalize on some of those break-even trades. So this chart here is gonna show exactly that. Let's say we can only get one of those trades to actually hit our first take profit and then the remainder of them run to our stop loss. These are the profits that we would actually make right here on that scenario. So if we took off 50%, left 50%, and we got stopped out on um, break even for one trade, 
and then the remainder of five trades ran straight to our stop loss, we would make $475, which is less than our initial three to one risk to reward or one to three risk to reward, whatever. Um, so as you can see, the numbers do get better uh, the lower percentage that you take off the position. And again, if you have two break-even trades, the numbers get even better. Now, three break-even trades, $825 profit, four break-even trades. Now, this is where if you're taking more break-even trades, it is better to take more profit off at that first take profit. All right. So once you get past this point here, if you have a higher win rate with a 1 to 1 1.5, like if you can get most of your trades, four or more of those uh, losses that you would initially take, right? If you can get four or more, it is better to take off more profit at your initial 15 pips, right? Or whatever risk to reward ratio you're using, but your initial take profit. Like if you basically had no trade go straight to your stop loss and you had six trades run to your first take profit, six trades, like those six trades come back to your break even point and then your initial four that would actually run to your 30 pips. That would actually be the better scenario in this case if you can do that. I mean, are you going to have a 100% win rate on a 1 to 1.5? Likelihood is probably not. But I mean, backtest it, see where you're at. See, based on this, what is better for you to actually trade, all right? But you might be asking yourself, okay, so if, you know, if we're talking about a 1 to 1.5, what are the numbers actually on that? Like if I didn't try to target a 1 to 3, uh, risk to reward and just strictly targeted a 1 to 1 1.5. What would those numbers break down to? Well, let's take a look at that. Right here, we got a strat strategy number three with a the same thing, a um, 1 to 1 1.5 risk to reward. However, with a 40% win rate, you'd just be breaking even. You'd be making no money. 50% win rate, $250. And basically to make more money than a 40% win rate with a one to three, you would actually need to be hitting a 70% win rate. Can most people get a 70% win rate? Probably not. I mean, that is fairly high um, to do consistently. There might be days, there might be weeks, maybe even a whole month that you do end up getting a 70% win rate. But over the long term, being consistent with that number is, you know, it's kind of rare to see, to be honest, but uh, it is possible. So like I said, do your own back testing, see where you're at with these numbers. With a 1 to 1.5 risk to reward, see where your win rate is over a large, um, large data set. With a 1 to, one, uh, 1 to 3, see where your win rate is with that and base everything on you because everybody is going to be different. However, I did break it down and I went with the more likely scenario, which is going to be this one right here for our final best outcome and highest probability for most traders. It's going to be taking take profit one, 50% off your trade, take profit two, take off the remainder 50% and you're going to have three trades break even. All right. So break it down. We have those initial four trades that gives us our 40% win rate on our full one to three risk to reward, which banks us $900. Now we have three trades that hit take profit one and they get stopped out at break even on the remainder of the position that banks us $225 right there. 
And then we have those three trades that actually get stopped out. We don't take any profit on them. We lose $300 on those trades for a 10 pip stop loss on one lot. All right, leaving us with a total profit of $825. So based on all the calculations that I got here that you can see, um, everything I broke down, this actually was the more likely scenario and probably going to be the, the more likely scenario for many traders out there is taking 50% off your trade at your first initial take profit, moving your stop loss to break even, you likely hit your take profit one three times out of 10 and get you know a break even trade on those three, hit uh, your full take profit on four of them and lose three trades out of the 10, like a full loss on three out of the 10. All right, that's the uh, the outcome we got here. So based on taking partial profits, is it actually better? I mean, really and truly, it all depends on the trader. Like if we go back to this, if you're unlikely to hit break-even trades and you're only gonna hit that one to three, four times and break even once, or maybe not even at all, you are better to just take one to three, all right? Um, if you have a high win rate and you are able to, you know, hit a one to 1 1.5, 90% of the time, you may be better to actually just hit a one to 1 1.5 risk to reward ratio. Like everything has to be back tested by you specifically. But if you want, take screenshots of all this and then, you know, test it out for yourself. Take screenshots of this chart here with a one break even trade, two break even trade, you know, different profit targets or uh, different partial amounts and see which one works better for you. Everybody is going to be different, but, you know, is it more likely that taking partials and securing a little bit of profits is the better scenario. It it is based on what I what I uh, calculated in my spreadsheet, right? So that is personally what I do. I do take partial profits. Um, I just seem to you know make a little bit extra money. It's not a whole lot extra, as you can see right here in this example. It was only $225 when trading one standard lot. It's not a whole lot extra, but it does help in the long run, right? So anyway, that's that. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you learned something, you know, let me know down in the comments below. Um, if you need a little bit more explanation, let me know as well. I'll be happy to do that for you. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I'll be throwing out a lot more content like this right here, you know, trying to break down different things that I don't see a lot of people actually talking about. You know, they go briefly into it. They say either, you know, take partial profits or don't take partial profits, but they don't really explain why you should or shouldn't be doing it or what the numbers actually break down to. Um, so Hopefully this gave a little bit more clarity than what you may have been given already up to this point. Um, but yeah, I'll be doing more videos like this. So if you like it, subscribe, uh, let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good day, happy trading, and take care.